In tennis, there are three categories of players. Prodigies who dominate the tour as teenagers and wunderkinds, the typical players who peak in their early 20s, and then there's this last group, which we are interested in. The late bloomers, who wait until they are close to their 30s or even later to bring out their best tennis, defying the odds and aging like fine wine. These are eight greatest late bloomers in tennis history. It wasn't until March 2015 that Feliciano Lopez achieved his highest single ranking as world number 12. The left-handed Spaniard made his pro circuit debut in 1997, but didn't compete regularly on the ATP Tour until 2002, the year he defeated a top five player, Marit Safin, and broke into the top 100. Lopez was still on course to peak in his mid-20s. He was world number 62 at the time. The following years, his rank climbed into the 20s, and at the end of 2005, he kind of plateaued until the turn of the decade. Despite deep runs into the quarterfinals of Wimbledon in 2005, 2008, and 2011, the world was yet to see the best of Feliciano Lopez. Already 30 in 2011, his relatively uneventful career looked set to fade into oblivion, but the Spaniard got better, winning ATP 250 titles in 2013 and 14, before reaching the US Open quarterfinals in 2015, after which he achieved his highest ranking. Lopez was just starting to get through. He competed in the French Open doubles in 2016 and won it alongside his compatriot, who also shared his name. Already 35, Lopez wasn't planning on leaving the stage. He won the men's singles title at the Queen's Club Championships, an ATP 500 event for the next two years. Already close to his 40th birthday, Lopez made his 78th consecutive appearance in a slam before making his 139th appearance in a Masters 1000 event in 2021. Later that year, Lopez would beat world number no. 5, Andre Rublev, in the Davis Cup Finals, becoming the first 40-plus player to win a top 5 opponent since Ken Rosewall in 1977. Although currently out of the top 500, Feliciano Lopez is yet to retire. Hard to imagine what's going on in his mind. Why is he one of the greatest? Consistency, longevity, and flair. But uh, he never really threatened the very top players and was mostly successful in the smaller tournaments. Next we have... The Chinese turned pro when she was 17. At 20, she was already going on a lengthy 25-month hiatus from the sport, probably because of her university studies and problems with the Chinese national coaching staff. Li Na returned to the courts in May 2004, and within the next few months, worked her way into the WTA Top 35. Interestingly, she reached the quarterfinals of Wimbledon, becoming the first Chinese to do so and breaking into the Top 20. Not quite the late bloomer story you expected, right? Fast forward to 2011, Li Na had made it to the Australian Open finals and had won the French Open with her quick reflexes, athleticism, and a cross-court forehand on full display as she got the better of Francesca Chiavon, a slam winner 12 years after turning pro. What a story. Now in the top five, Li Na had the world at her feet and it only got better because despite a mediocre 2012 season by her standards, she reached her second Australian Open final around her 31st birthday and finally won the Melbourne Slam at 32 in 2014 after being a match point down. Lena became the world number two after her second slam triumph. Sadly, she would have a debilitating left knee injury, which tilted her into what we may very well call early retirement. She definitely had more in the tank, didn't she? Lena isn't the only player on this list to retire shortly after winning a slam. Multiple slams, a captivating playing style, and dozens of records show why she's one of the greatest. Unfortunately, she had a relatively early retirement. And then there's Stan the Man, who took almost 12 years to win a slam in sensational fashion. The sight of the Swiss firing his trademark down the line backhand was truly amazing to watch. But first, let's talk about his childhood. Unlike other players, this guy didn't even pick up a racket until he was eight years old. And even then, he practiced just once a week until he was 11 before turning pro in 2002 at the age of 17. The Swiss spent most of his career in obscurity, no thanks to his larger than life compatriot, Roger Federer, who was getting all the accolades and attention. In fact, before 2014, Wawrinka's career highlight had been the gold medal that he won in collaboration with Roger Federer at the Olympic doubles event in Beijing in 2008. Although Stan had snuck into the top 10 at the time, his performances on the big stages were extremely underwhelming. It wasn't until 2011, after he won the Chennai Open, that he managed to silence a few detractors. He reached the US Open semis in 2013, but everything changed in 2014 after he defeated a slightly injured Nadal in the Australian Open final. Still, some thought that it was a fluke. But not until he defeated Prime Djokovic both in the 2015 French Open final and in the 2016 US Open final before losing to Nadal in the 2017 French Open final, the Swiss had now defeated the number one ranked tennis player in the finals of all the slams he won. Stan is the man in Monte Carlo. 
Warringah had put himself into the Big Four and made it clear that he wasn't just a random page in Federer's history books. You wouldn't be wrong to call him the greatest latecomer in tennis history. In his prime, Stan was a consistent threat to the Big Three and everyone else on the tour with his incredible playing style. He captured three out of the four slam titles and was the man to beat on his day. This guy didn't even play much tennis as a kid. The only argument against him is his current form, which has been pretty bad, and he looks to be a shadow of his former self. Only a few tennis players appreciate their supporters like John Millman. Born in 1989, the Australian professional considered retirement before his career even fully took flight in 2011 after a bad injury. Fortunately, he received immense support from fans and persevered, something he hasn't forgotten till today. Millman spent his early career playing lots of challenger tournaments, only managing to break into the top 100 at the age of 26. However, his major breakthrough wouldn't come until three years later in 2018, when he upset second seed Roger Federer in the fourth round to reach the quarterfinals of the US Open. As a result, he climbed to a career-high world number 33. Two years later in 2020, he was celebrating his first and only singles title so far, the Astana Open in Kazakhstan at the ripe old age of 31. Late bloomer, but by all means, no pushover. Millman has had a decent career with unbelievable comebacks from injury and has shown mental resilience on occasion. However, his list of achievements isn't the most impressive here. The next case in point. Dear Aslan, the 29-year-old Russian had been grinding away for most of his career, but finally grabbed the headlines last year after he became the first man in the Open era to reach the semi-finals in his Grand Slam debut at the 2021 Australian Open. No small feat. Aslan followed that performance up by winning the Dubai Open a month later. He would also beat the former world number one Novak Djokovic at the Serbia Open the following month before adding two more top 10 wins against Diego Schwartzman and his compatriot Daniel Medvedev. Having made his ATP main draw debut in 2013 at the age of 19, Aslan was dealt with a hard luck for most of his early career. From career-halting injuries to lack of sponsors to trouble finding coaches, most players would have given up mentally, but not Aslan. Luckily, his long years of training, sacrifices, and persistence paid off, and he has remained a source of inspiration for struggling pro athletes. Aslan also won the ATP 250 Kremlin Cup in 2021, before adding to his tally this year with the Sydney Tennis Classic title, after which he reached his highest ranking at world number 14. Despite not being the most fortunate guy on the tour, Aslan has earned impressive wins against several top-tier opponents, showing just how much potential he's got. Would be nice to see him achieve more with his talent, though. The spouse of Fabio Fognini had the ultimate send-off before retiring after she won her first ever slam at the US Open. Panetta turned pro in 2000 at the age of 18 and steadily improved her game until she won her first WTA title and made a top 30 entry midway through the decade. The slow and steady growth continued until the turn of the decade when she won the Australian Open doubles title in 2011 and in the process, becoming the first Italian player to achieve that. But by the following year, she was out of the top 50 due to injuries. It didn't take long to make a comeback though. The Italian won the Indian Wells title at the age of 32 in 2014. All of her successes pale in comparison to her 2015 season where she won the US Open, going into the tournament as the 26th seed. 15 years after becoming a professional, Pineda had won a singles Grand Slam title, defeating her compatriot Roberta Vinci, who was also kind of a late bloomer in her own right in the final. Ironically, Panetta shocked the world by announcing her retirement in her acceptance speech after winning 11 singles titles and 17 doubles titles throughout her career. Unusual. Panetta had enviable achievements winning slams in both her singles and doubles career. She provided tough competition for the best in her era and went out in grand style. Would have been nice to see her completely dominate the tour. How about Kevin Anderson? Hi, I'm Kevin Anderson. Many people are guilty of forgetting the big serving South African. Anderson turned pro in 2007 at the age of 21, which is later than almost all the other professional players. And it took the 6'8 Anderson four years to bag his first ATP title on home soil moving into the top 35 as a result. By 2014, he was busy smashing four top five players on his way to the top 10 the following year. Already 30, he struggled with injury in 2016, but when he came back, we saw a new Anderson. Two slam finals in two years at the US Open and Wimbledon, losing to Nandal and Djokovic respectively. Anderson defeated Roger Federer in the quarterfinals of the Wimbledon 2018 at the age of 32, winning an additional two ATP titles that year and breaking into the top five. No small feat for the big man who morphed to become a real danger. Despite always being tough from the get-go, not many saw Anderson's late blossoming coming. After turning 30, 
Anderson became hard as nails and added finesse to his athletic game, eliminating any thoughts that he was a one-dimensional player. Anderson retired this year with 350 wins on the ATP Tour in a more than decent career. Perhaps one of the most impressive stories on our list is that of Angelique Kerber, who turned pro in 2003 at the age of 15. She cracked the WTA top five nine years later, which wasn't bad by any standard. But here's where things get interesting. Kerber aged like fine wine and maintained the momentum going into her late 20s, winning four WTA titles in 2015 and two slams, the Australian Open and US Open in 2016, and became the oldest woman to be world number one at 28 years old after dethroning Serena Williams in 2016. Although she struggled in 2017 and dropped out of the top 20, she was back in 2018 to win the Wimbledon again. Again, she fell off the radar for two years but made a sensational top 10 comeback in 2021 at the age of 33. Although she took a break this year due to pregnancy, it wouldn't be surprising to have her back on tour in the near future. Just like Warinka, Kerber has one of the most impressive CVs for any late bloomer, winning three out of four slams, and she could take out the best players on her day. Not much to argue against her except for some rare inconsistencies. And to the greatest late bloomer of all time, we've got to give it to Stan the Man, right from his childhood. He had always been one to arrive late, but when he did, no one else could get the better of him. His three slam achievements speak for themselves. In an era with arguably the best trio tennis players of all time, Warinka flipped the switch and gave them stiff competition. Angelique Kerber is a close second though. If there's anything we've learned in tennis, it's that it's never too late to break out. But for every late bloomer, there are a few wunderkinds, which is why you should see this next video.